That's it. We're about to go out with a bang. Y'all ready? Hands up. Real quick. I know that all things are working for my good, yeah, cause she's intentional, never failing, all things are working for my good, cause she's intentional, hey, and it's never failing, all things are working for my good. Intentional. It's never failing. All things are working. Hey, I know that all things are working for my good. Yes, they are. Yeah, I know that all things are working for my good. All things are working for my good.
Well, good morning. Another first Sunday. Another day under the sun. Another day that showed that God loved us so much that he woke us up this morning and started us on our way. Welcome. Welcome to Camp Hope AME Church here in Macon, Georgia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For it is true that God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus. And Jesus died for us. That we might be reunited with our God. And before he left, he told us, he said, we're going to sit and we're going to break bread together. We're going to drink wine together. We're going to do this as a memorial to remember that God loved you so much that he sent me to you that I might die. So we're going to have a celebration for God loving us by doing the Last Supper. We call the communion on this communion Sunday. Amen. I like to welcome all those out there on the phone line. Amen. Sister Betty Strickton, Brother Henry Lowe, Brother John and Curtis Lowe, Sister Eddie May Hall, welcome, welcome. I like to welcome all those out there in the virtual world on Facebook. Welcome, Betty Dazar, Sister Betty Dazar, Sister Elizabeth William Moton. Hallelujah, welcome. Welcome, welcome brother Calvin Pitts. Welcome, welcome on this Sunday morning. Welcome, Reverend Chalmer, hallelujah. Welcome, welcome Sister Curry. Oh, we'd like to welcome Washington State this morning, hallelujah. Welcome London, hallelujah. Welcome Alabama, hallelujah. Florida, hallelujah, welcome. Welcome into this place. We just thank you for joining us. Well, let's get right to it. Amen. Let us get into our announcements. Amen. Let us remember that we have our prayer line that happens every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Hosted by none other than our own Reverend Latonja Renfro and Reverend Ida Sue Graham. Come and be with the prayer warriors. Be with those that know how to get a prayer through. Those that allow you to do a testimony. Those that allow you to sing a song. Those that allow you to come and agree in mind and body and soul. Because scripture tell us when we come together touching and agreeing. And it doesn't have to be physically touching and agreeing. But in our spirits and our minds and in agreement with what we're saying. God is in the midst and God will answer our prayer. So join us out there every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For those that are in the Central Standard Time, that would be 6 p.m. Hallelujah. Also, follow us. Follow us, of course, on Facebook. Amen. Out here, we ask you to just invite people to come out. Follow us. Ask us to like our presentations. Amen. Also, if you know, we're also now on YouTube. Have them subscribe to us and like us as well. Amen. Out there on uh YouTube. Also, we're on Instagram as well. Go out there and go on Instagram and follow us as well. We invite you to go out there and see sermons from our past uh, church school. Amen. And also Bible study. Amen. And in the, the school, we teach project management. Go out there and, and view and like and subscribe to us on uh, YouTube. Amen. Also, I'd like to let you know, as many have been asking, how can we become a member and join in with your part of the kingdom? You can become a member by becoming a virtual member. Just let us know. Send us a personal Facebook message. Email us at camphopeamec at, at gmail.com or write us a letter at 114 Camp Hope Church Road, Macon, Georgia, 31211. You're welcome, welcome, welcome. Also, if you have any special prayers, you can also send them that way and also send them in a written format to our location in Macon. We just thank you, thank you, thank you, amen. We want to also invite you out there to our Bible study. Our Bible study is every Wednesday at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time 
and at 5.30 Central Standard Time, amen, on Facebook Live. Also remember, if you don't want to come on the virtual world, you can come in on us on the phone line at 978-990-5041 with an asset code of 675984. Also, I'd like to remind you that we will be having a, an official board meeting tomorrow. Amen. Uh, I called down and everyone, that's what they wanted to do. So we're going to have it tomorrow, September the 7th, Monday, September the 7th. So be there. I'll be there at 630. Amen. So come out and join with us as we do the business of the church. Also, we'll be back again, hallelujah, on September the 21st, as it is another Monday to conduct our business. Hallelujah. Come, come out and join in with us. If you want to see me or talk to me or whatever we need to do in person, please come on that day. Hallelujah. I see my sister, Valerie Stewart. Uh, Kenna Moses, amen. Welcome, welcome out there, amen. Welcome to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God and his mercy endures forever. Remember, as we go into our prayer today, remember those that's out there on our prayer list, amen. I see we've already typed in. Let us remember the Scott family, amen. Let us remember uh, Sister uh, Lo, uh, Sister Lo, amen, Lolita Lo, Sister Mary Aaron, Sister Diane Tarber, Sister Brother Jeremy Brundage, Sister uh, Judith Young, uh, our own Reverend Ida Sue Graham and her son uh, Joshua, my brother, Brother Joseph Martin, uh, Brother Willie Forrest, Brother Donald Lindsay, Sister Judith King, King amen, also Brother Johnny Aaron and his family, amen. Sister Evelyn Turner, amen. Sister Michelle Gillier, Gil Guillory, amen, and her husband. Sister Minnie Cross, Sister Elizabeth Moten and her family. Uh, Sister Janice Lowe, Brother George Aaron, Sister Viola Williams, Sister Gloria Singleton, amen. Let us also remember Sister Sally Wooten, Sister... Maxine and Cecilia Kennedy. Let us remember Reverend Irma Chalmer and her family. Let us remember Brother Albert Rimberly, uh, our own Reverend Latondra Renfro and her daughter Nayira Lewis. Let us remember Brother John Lowe, Brother Henry Lowe. Amen. Let us remember Deaconess Doris P. Harmon and Sister Mary Alice Johnson. Let us remember Sister Latanya Butler and her son, amen. Let us remember Brother Eddie Lowe Jr., Sister Geneva Harvey, Sister Deborah Brunders, Sister Elsie Thompson, amen. Let us remember Brother Robert Boudreau, Sister Evelyn Billiard and her family, amen. Sister Nick and Brother Ali Martin, amen. Let us remember Sister Annie F. Wilder, amen. Let us remember Deaconess Margaret Thomas, Brother Curtis Lowe, Sister Faith Sumler. Let us remember Jamie, seven-year-old recovering from a stroke. Let us remember Sister Barabino and her family. And let us remember Reverend Leela Waller, amen, and Judith Jackson and her family, amen. Let us remember all of those that are out there on our prayer list when we go into prayer. Also, just another thing we want to let you remember, amen, we know that our mid-year is coming up, amen. We ask that uh, you would uh, work with us as we work with our committee on our budget raising. We're asking each member, if they can and will, amen, to donate $200 towards our effort for taking care of our mid-year. Each auxiliary, you know what you're asked for, amen. And we're asking we would just join together. Remember, with this, this is not a, a constant thing, amen. This is only going to happen two times a year, amen. That's for our mid-year obligation and our annual conference obligation. So let's get out there and do what we need to do. For we know that God's purpose for doing uh, his church and take care of her church, amen, is tithes and offerings. So let us just obey God, for God says if we obey and do it the way God says do it, that God will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings that we have don't have room to receive. 
Also, amen, you know, we are finishing up with our mortgage, amen. We've sent out our shirts and we sent out our mask, amen. People have called me and told me they have received their shirts and they have received their mask. And once everyone get them, we are going to have a mask and t-shirt celebration where we're going to post, amen, as we wear our mask and t-shirt to show that we have allowed God to use us to pay off the mortgage here at Camp Hope AME Church. I can't wait for the celebration. I pray that you can't wait for the celebration. Amen. As you know, amen, on our teams, we have the passage team, we have the A team, we have the justice team, we have the harmony team, amen, amen. The passage team have reached their goal, amen. The A team have reached their goal. We pray that we will continue helping the justice team as well as the harmony team reach the goal that they have set, amen. Our God is a good God and his mercy endures forever. And I'd have to personally stop at this particular moment and thank all of our partners, amen. We couldn't do this without you, amen. Everything that you send us, amen, we have used it that we might broadcast to you, that we might continue in our ministry, that we can continue what we are doing in the name of the Lord. So we just thank you, thank you, thank you. But as we always say, don't rob from where God has given you a shelter, amen. Your tithes and offerings go to your church, amen. Everything above and beyond the tithe is where your blessing is found, amen. And we thank you for doing that, amen. Hallelujah. We'd like to welcome uh, Brother Bernard Sutton, amen. And we'd like to welcome our sister, Sister Bessie Burns out there in Leland, Mississippi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. Our God's a great God. And also we'd like to say happy birthday to all our birthday people for this month and all the previous months that have had birthdays. May God bless you with many, many more years. All right, let's get right into our praise and worship. Hallelujah.
all things work together for my good And I know that all things work together for my good And I know that all things work together for my good you but I've been shouting amen and uh, let me correct the title amen Reverend uh, Sutton amen and we congratulate you on your new appointment amen congratulations we also congratulating you from being to being elevated to itinerant elder in the African Methodist Episcopal Church and thank you thank you so much for joining us uh, this morning. Also, I just want to make a shout out and praise God for Sister Brenda Stachia, amen, who's at home now recovering from COVID. God has brought her through. God has brought her out, amen, and our God is a great God, hallelujah, and God just knows what to do, how to do it, when to do it, hallelujah. Let's get right into our call to worship, amen. Remember in our call to worship, when I do the minister, amen, and you will join in me when I say the people, amen. I know that I'm ready. Are you ready? Hallelujah, hallelujah. We'll start out by saying, I was glad. I don't know about you, but I am so glad. Hallelujah. I am so glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates. Oh, Jerusalem, come on, say it with me. For a day and night course is better than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house, my God, than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Come on, say it with me. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwells. Say it with me. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before me. Hallelujah. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be something that I say, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Say it with me. O oh Lord, hallelujah. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done what marvelous things. I will sing of loyalty and justice to you, O Lord, I will sing. Let us hear our hymn of praise this morning. Unexpected situations Living here below I've had friends to turn their backs on me And leave me standing in the cold I've been hurt in the church as I attempt to do God's work By people who call themselves saints Many times I felt like giving up <laughs> But the Spirit said, Daddy, you came You know the Lord, He puts you through a lot of things you can't understand And for everything he allows There's a reason So in my life 
The devil gets no glory. Everywhere I go, I'll tell the story. How God has a way of turning things around. Yeah. He meant it for my good. God meant it for my good. He brought Hallelujah, God meant it for our good. Hallelujah, our God is a good God and God's mercy do us forever. Let's go right into our prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we just thank you. We praise you, we glorify you. Help our unbelief. Lord, help us to know that you know what time, what moment, what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Let us realize that we should trust in you with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding. And no matter what is happening to us, that you are right there with us. You're never alone. You never will leave us nor forsake us. 
And no matter how it comes out, no matter what the condition we find ourselves in, that all things truly do work together for our good, for you love us and you have called us according to your purpose. Lord, help our unbelief. Strengthen us to know that the battle is not ours, but it's yours. The taking care of the situations and circumstances, Lord, you are in control. You open doors, you close doors, you make ways out of no way, Lord, and we thank you. Help our unbelief, remove our fears, Lord. For you truly did not give us a spirit of fear, but of peace and of a sound mind, Lord, and of power in the name of Jesus. We pray for those, Lord, that come up against us in thought, in word, and in deed. We pray for those that set traps for us. We pray for those that try to pull us down, Lord. We pray for them. We lift them up before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Have your way. And Lord, if we've done anything in thought, word, and deed to cause these things to happen, please, Lord, change our hearts, change our disposition, change our mind. Let us walk and be a light for you. Let us be a voice for you. Let us be a witness for you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for letting us learn from our trials and tribulations, learn from our mistakes, our lessons learned, learn from all the tragedies that we have gone through. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for shaping us, molding us, making us the way we should be, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We pray for our virtual audience, no matter where they are. We pray for them in their situations and in their circumstances. We pray that they will see that you are there with them. No matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstances is going on, you are with them, Lord. We pray that they would be aware of this. We thank that your Holy Spirit is working for you in us, through us, reminding us, teaching us, comforting us, and keeping us. Lord, we thank you. And Lord, of course, we thank you for sending Jesus. For Jesus is your love that you sent for us, for he died that we might be back in good standing with you. We might be able to come before your throne of grace and mercy and say, God, here I am. Father, here I am. Mother, here I am. Abba, here I am. I need you. I'm calling on you. And we can know that you hear us. And we can know that even when we mess about our prayers, that you've allowed the Holy Spirit to pray for us when we know not how to pray correctly to you. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we know we fall short of your glory each and every day. Forgive us for the sins that we have committed in thought, in word, and in deed. But Lord, we'd ask that you would give us a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing each and every day, Lord, that we might go out and glorify you. This is our prayer we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and thank God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We pray that everyone have said amen and amen. Let's get our Bibles out. Let's get our swords out. Amen. And let us turn to John, John chapter 11. Let us turn to John chapter 11. Amen. John chapter 11. And we're going to be skipping around. Amen. We're going to read. Hallelujah. We're going to read verses one through seven and then 11. Click to the next slide for me through 15 and then 20 through 26, and then 36 through 35, and finally, amen, 36 through 45, amen. I know that's quite a bit, but we want you to get the whole story, amen, that we are talking about in John chapter 11. So open up your Bibles to John chapter 11. 
Hallelujah. For those that are out in the virtual world, just follow us on the screen here. John chapter 11, starting at verse 1. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and Martha, her so Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Mary and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let's go, let us go back to Judea. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but the disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Verse 20. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been there, my brother would have not died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Mary answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me would live even though they die. And whosoever live by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Verse 32. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and said and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Hallelujah. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened his eyes of the blind man had kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a grave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hand and feet wrapped with straps of linen and a cloth, and a, and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to him, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. I have read you the story of Lazarus and his resurrection in John chapter 11. Amen. Hallelujah. May the hearers of God's word be blessed and lifted up. Hallelujah. 
from all that dwells below the skies. Let the Creator's praise arise. Let the Redeemer's name be sung through every land, by every tongue. Let us sing hallelujah. From all that dwells below the sky, let thy Creator's praise arise. Let the Redeemer's name be sung through every land by every tongue. The summer of the Decalogue, here with Christ our Savior, say Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go right into our tithes and our offerings. Amen. Know that God is a good God. God has blessed us. All he asks is that we tithe and we offering because our scriptures tell, will a person rob God? And we ask, how can we rob God? And God said, we rob him. We rob her in our tithes and our offerings. But God promised if you would give, Give not out of necessity, Lord, but give, give. He would open up the windows of heaven and pour you our blessings. She would open up the windows and pour you our blessings. You did not have room to receive. For those that giving, we know we have online giving. You can give uh, via Givelify. Link has been stored out there that you can click on and give. Amen. If you would like to give physically, you can always give. Uh, in the mail by sending a check or money order to Camp Hope AME Church at 114 Camp Hope Church Road, located in Mecca, Georgia, 31211. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'd like to welcome my sister uh, Melvia Martin out there. Hallelujah. And her family. We'd like to uh, welcome Yvonne Joseph, amen, out there. Hallelujah. We'd like, we'd like to welcome Reverend Walter Lawson out there. Amen. We'd like to welcome, hey, Sister Sister Bear. Hallelujah. Good to see you, Monsina Bear. Hallelujah. Welcome all of you out there that are out there on our virtual to join us on this first Sunday. We see Sister Kimberly Hall as well. Amen. Out there on our line. We just thank all of you for joining us. Hallelujah, this, this is a communion Sunday, Lord. so let's go right on forth and do what we have been called to do, amen. Let us hear our song of selection before the sermon, hallelujah. What the enemy meant for evil, you turn it around for my good, my good. What the enemy meant for evil, you turn it around for my good, my good. You turn it in my favor. You turn it in my favor. 
Hallelujah. 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 Let us go back to the scripture. Amen. And I will read to you just verses 1 through 7 and then 11 B through 16. Amen. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Martha, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick and was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard that Jesus said, this, this sickness is not will not end in death. No, it is for the glory of God. It is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Mary and her sister Martha. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Jeru to Judea. Verse 11 B, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, it will, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad. I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go see him. I've read the word of God for the people of God. I want you to just shout out into the air, say intentional. If anybody's around you, touch them and say intentional. I want you to close your eyes and just say intentional. Now, what do I mean when I say intentional? It means I or someone else have done something on purpose. They knowingly and deliberately did what they had in mind to do. Intentional. Our text this morning tell us that the sister of Lazarus, Mary and Martha had sent a message to Jesus explaining that their brother was deadly ill. However, when Jesus heard it, it says that this, he said that this illness was not, would not end in death, but in the glory for God and his son. Therefore, he stayed where he was for another two days before telling his disciples that they should go back to Judea. Now, when the Disciples heard this, they protested. They reminded Jesus, said, those people down there in Judah, remember, they were stoning us. They will stone you. It is not safe for us to go there. Jesus, however, responded to them by saying they needed to go so that he would wake Lazarus up from his sleep. Not understanding what Jesus meant, they responded by saying, well, if he's sleeping, Master, if he's sleeping, Lord, sleeping is good for you. He'll recover. And hearing this, their misunderstanding of what Jesus meant, Jesus said to him, Lazarus is dead. Now it is obvious that Jesus intentionally waited for Lazarus to die before he decided to go to Bethany. But why would Jesus do this? Our text tells us that he loved Lazarus. It is clearly, it clearly this de declares it in verse 3 where it says, the sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus saying, Lord, the one you love is sick. And it goes on to emphasize in, 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 in verse 5 and broaden that description that says Jesus not only loved Lazarus, but he loved Mary and his sister. 
So, so, so Jesus loved that family. So, so why would Jesus wait until Lazarus dies before he comes? What is God teaching us in our text this morning? How does this account help us in our present day situation and circumstances? Why would the Lord allow this to happen to someone he loves? Now, you know that last question is an age-old question that has, has, has retranslated itself down through the life and times of Christians throughout history. Why did God allow this to happen to me? I'm born again. I love God. I know she loves me. So why would God allow this to happen to me? In our text, it says that Jesus intentionally waited until his beloved friend Lazarus was dead before he went to see about him. Sometimes in our life, the Lord intentionally waits until our situation has overcome us. God intentionally waits until it looks like it's over for us. He intentionally waits until we were fired from our job. She intentionally waits until the doctor has given up on us. He intentionally waits until the lights have been turned off in our home. We have been evicted out of our home. We've been thrown out of school. Nobody could help us or even they have even given up on us where we have reached the place of no return. God intentionally waits. When Jesus had arrived in Bethany, he found Lazarus had already been dead four days. And many people from Jerusalem had gathered and came to comfort Mary and Martha for their loss. And when Martha had heard that Jesus was coming, she, she left them to meet up with him. When she met him, Martha said, if you had been here just a little earlier, my brother would not have died. But Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said, well, Lord, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection. But Jesus stops and says, hold on now. I am the resurrection. And that through me, those who believe will yet live. And when he asked her if she believed, he said, Martha, do you believe this? Martha said, she, yes, Lord, I believe. And once she said, I believe, she left to go back to her sister, Mary. How many times have God reached out to us to tell us to trust in him no matter what? Proverbs 3 instructs to us, trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. But you know, we still find ourselves asking that age old question, why did God allow this to happen to me? Well, God, she teaches us in Romans 8 that, that, that we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. And, and, and we know this, we study it, we, we have this in our heart, we say it all the time, but, but when this thing has happened to us and it has overcome us and it, it has seemingly defeated us, we ask the question, why did God allow this to happen to me? So sometimes we don't understand. And you know what? When we, when we when we finally get a hold of it, we finally get a hold of ourselves, and, and we get an understanding, and we stand on it. Then we got to deal with other folk. Other folks begin to think we're crazy, and and start saying to us things such as, "God only helps those who helps themselves." They say things like, "God only helps babies and fools," and and, and you ain't no baby, and I don't think you know. Ooh. And if that's not bad 
enough, our enemies try to use our faith, our trust, our belief, and God's going to help us no matter what the situation is, no matter what the circumstances is. They use our faith, our trust, our belief against us. You see, folks are there standing at the gravesite of our situation. They're waiting purposely to bury us. They're, they're waiting purposely to, to permanently get rid of us. They're waiting purposely to destroy our reputation and to commit our credibility ashes to ashes, dust to dust. They are purposely waiting for our situation and circumstances to get to the place of no return. And when this happens, even our church members and some of our own family members lose confidence in us, lose confidence in us being restored out of this situation or circumstance that we find ourselves in. Our text says that when, when, when Martha returns, she went to Mary and told her that Jesus had come. And Mary immediately got up and, and, and went to meet Jesus. And, and when the people saw her leaving, they, they thought she was on her way back to the grave site. That she could cry and mourn over her brother's loss. So they all got up and we we're going to follow her. We we're going to be there to support her. We we're, we're, we're going to hang out with her. We're going to go see what's going to happen. But Mary went to meet Jesus. And when Jesus, when Mary met Jesus, she said to him, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother Lazarus, he would not have died. You know, many times after we have prayed and waited on God and he did not come to our aid, and we thought that she would not have come to help us out. We sound just like Mary. Lord, if you would have been here, you could have delivered me from this. Lord, if you have shown up, you could have changed the outcome of this situation. You could have transformed this circumstance into something positive for me. Why, Lord, why have you allowed this to happen to me? But for some reason, God did not show up doing Mary Martha's situation. He didn't move in our favor. He allowed the tragedy to, to take place. And now we're broken about it. We, we're sad about it. We're mourning just like Mary Martha was mourning, just like they're crying out. We become scared and upset about it and we don't know what we're going to do now. Our family can't help us. Our friends can't help us. And everybody is just as sad as what has happened to us. Oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you. I wish I could help you, but I, I can't, but I'll be here as a support for you. It says when Jesus saw Mary's grief and that the people who were with her were sad and concerned about her well-being, he asked her, where have they buried your brother Lazarus? When Jesus came to the grave of Lazarus, he wept. Seeing this, the people remarked, oh, Jesus really loved Lazarus very much. What is God trying to, or what is God teaching us? What is he revealing us this morning in this text? Well, God is selling to us no matter what the situation or, or what the circumstances are. Never forget that God loves you. And God has shown that love to you. Through his son Jesus. 
For John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world, hallelujah, that he gave his only begotten son to save us. Save us from ourselves. Save us from our bad decisions. Save us from the results of situation and circumstances that have overcome us that we are in at the time of the trouble, of the trial, and the tribulation. God is teaching us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Now, he didn't say that weapons wouldn't form. He didn't say we wouldn't be attacked. He didn't say we wouldn't go through something. He didn't say that we would be in victorious. We wouldn't be victorious in the way we think we should be victorious. He didn't say I would work it out the way you think it ought to be worked out. But God clearly tells us if we look in Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, he says, My thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor are your ways my ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God's not going to do it the way we want God to do it. God's going to do it the way it should be done. No matter how it turns or not, no matter what the situation has happened, no matter, God's going to work it out. Therefore, no matter the end results of a situation we're dealing with, no matter, we must trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. You know, the people who had followed Mary and Jesus to the gravesite started asking, whether or not Jesus could have kept Lazarus from dying. And Jesus hearing this, he said, look, roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb. <clears throat> and Martha was there and Martha said, hold up now, Lord. Roll away the stone. It's stinking in there. His body is decaying. He's been in there four days, Lord. Roll away the stone. But Jesus said to her, didn't I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? How many of us in our situation, our circumstances, accept defeat? How many of us have given up on anything good coming out of the situation we were in? How many of us have accepted the circumstances that we have found ourselves in? God didn't come when we wanted him to come. He didn't stop what, 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 what was happening to us. They, they, they won. We lost. So, so, so we just need to move on and pick up the pieces. It is what it is. How many of us is in this mode in the midst of our situation after we have experienced the result of things happening to us? But even though Lazarus was dead, even though his body may have been sticking, even though it was four days, Jesus said, roll away the stone. When the stone had removed, Jesus said a prayer to God, thanking God for the opportunity to give glory to his name. And afterwards, Jesus called out to Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. And the text says, and he who had died came out bound hand and foot with gray clothes and his face was wrapped with a cloth and Jesus says, loose him and let him go. Now loose him and let him go is a whole different sermon. You'll get that on another day. But how? How does this account help us in our present day situation and circumstances? We must realize, we, we, we must stand on, we must hold fast to what God has promised us. 
He has said to us, He will never leave us nor forsake us. It does not matter what the situation is. It does not matter what the circumstances surrounding the problems are. It doesn't matter who it is that is attacking it. What they can or will do to us. All things, not just some things. All things will work out for our good. Just as God has said to Joshua in Joshua 1 and 9. I have now, I am not. I have not commanded you. Be strong. God said, I have now commanded you. Be strong. Hear the words of the Lord in the midst of your situation. I now command you. Be strong. No matter what the circumstances are, be strong. No matter whether you've lost your job, be strong. No matter whether they've won over you, be strong. No matter whether you are laying in the hospital, be strong. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you are. No matter the situation or circumstances. No matter what it looks like. God allows things to happen to us not only for the growing of our faith, but also to show our enemies who we are and whose we are. To show our naysayers that God's got us no matter what they think about us or have to say concerning us. To show our haters that though God slay, slays us, yet shall we trust him. For our God has said to us, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God is helping us to understand that no matter who, no matter what the situation is, what the circumstances is, he will deliver you. They could have signed your death certificate, dug your grave, planned out and plan out the time and place for your wake service, and schedule your funeral services. They could have dug out the grave site and lowered your body in the grave and covered you up and counted you up. Out. But God. You see, Lazarus had won even from the very beginning of, at his birth. God had allowed his destiny to be, to be dictated at giving him a name at his birth. Lazarus in Hebrew is Eleazar, which means God has helped. Check that out. When God allows things to happen to us, it is intentional. Look at your neighbor and say, it is intentional. Even though they count you out, God allowed it. He did it intentionally. Even though they dug your, your grave, God allowed it. It was intentional. Even though they counted you out, God allowed it. It was intentional for to show them Whatever your name is, Michael come forth, John come forth, Walter come forth, Curtis come forth, Betty come forth, come forth, Kimberly, come forth, Latanya, come forth, Ida, come forth, Elizabeth, come forth, Eddie Mae, come forth, Brittany, come forth, yes, yes. come forth. And the power of God brings us out of whatever situation we're in and restore us for the glory of God. And we come out better than we went into the situation and the circumstances. Intentional. Come on, shout it out, intentional. 
Hallelujah. Now it's a time for us to go into our communion service. Hallelujah. And before we go into our communion service, we would like to invite each and every one of you out there to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For it is that when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he is in control of our lives, in control of our, control of our situation, control of our circumstances. We don't have to worry about it anymore. For we know that he will never leave us nor forsake us. All things shall work out for our good. But you got to have Jesus. The Bible says Jesus stands at the door of your heart and knocks and says, let me in. That I may bring you back to a loving father. Let me in. That your prayers may rise up to a loving father's ears. Let me in. That we might be reunited with our mother. Let me in. That our names might be written, your name might be written in the Lamb's book of life. But this cannot happen unless you accept Jesus into your life. The scripture says you must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. So if you want to accept Jesus, let's repeat after me. Say, Lord, I accept you as God's only begotten son. I accept you as a sacrifice for my sin. I know you have conquered death. You rose from the dead. And now you're there with the Father. There to be an advocate me. I believe. Come into my life. I believe. Be with me in my life. I believe. Order my steps in your word. Now you have said this. You are part of the kingdom now. You are in the process of salvation. And if you have done that, please let us know, hallelujah, by sending us a letter, by typing it out, amen, on the platform here. But let us know. Send us an email. Let us know you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Also, those that may be looking for virtual membership, we invite you now. To give us your hand and that you would become a part of Camp Hope Amy Church right where you are. You'll be a virtual member. You will be covered through us up into a loving father. This is your time. This is your moment. And those that are already a member and want to recommit your life over to Jesus. Give your life back over to God. This is also your time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is your time. This is your season. So let us listen to the invitation. No song as you make up your mind, as you listen to God's voice, as you listen to your heart, the Holy Ghost. A lot of us grew up believing At any moment we could lose it all And at the drop of a hat God might turn his back and move on A lot of us feel like we blew it Thinking that we're just too far gone But I want you to know there's still a hope for you now No matter what you've done You can't erase His love Nothing can change it You're not separated No matter what There's never been a better time 
There's never been a better time to get clean So come as you are Run to the cross and be free Oh, be free your heart is now turned over to him. Now we go into what we have been told to do in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ye that do and truly and honestly repent of your sin and are in love and charity with your neighbor, and intend to lead a new life following commandments of God and Walking henceforth in his holy name, draw near. Draw near with faith and take of this holy sacrament to your comfort. And make your humble confession right where you are to almighty God. Pull out your grape juice, pull out your wine, pull out your water, pull out your bread, pull out your cracker, pull out your wafer, pull it out, Lord. Come and let us be before God who loved us and keep us. And let us join together with the general confession as you may see on the screen. Let us sit together, Almighty God, Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things, judge of all people. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness that we from time to time most grievously have committed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly a wrath of any nation against us. We do honestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, whom of thy great mercies have promised forgiveness of sin to all them that heartily repent and true faith turn unto you. Let us shout, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all of our sins. Confirm our faith and strengthen us in all goodness. 
and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us say amen. Almighty God, whom of all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee. And worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord, let us say, Amen. It is very meek and right and, and our bountiful duties that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the companies of heaven, we laud and magnify thy holy name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. But in thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy. So much as to gather crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Let us shout, grant us! Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful souls and bodies may be washed through his blood and that we may ever more dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, whom of thy tender mercy did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And did institute in his holy gospel, commanded us continuing perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us. Let us say, hear us. Yeah. Hear us, O oh merciful Father. We, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we receiving these preachers of bread and of wine. The bread and of wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy instituted in remembrance of his death. And passion may be partakers of in most blessed body and blood, who in the same night when he had given thanks, he took bread and he broke it. Hallelujah. And after giving thanks, he said, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he said to them, drink it, drink all of it. For this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for, remember, for the many, for the remission of sin. Do this as often as ye would in remembrance of me. I have obedience of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I do take and I eat. Lift up your bread and eat it. Lift up your cracker, eat it. Lift up your waker, eat it now in remembrance of him. Let us take the wine, your grape juice, your water. Let us lift it up and drink it. in remembrance of him. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ which is given for him. The blood which he shed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us say now together the Lord's Prayer, our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servant, desire thy fatherly goodness, mercy to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, that we and thy whole church may obtain remission of our sin and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, our bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although, although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice. Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bountiful duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father, Almighty, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks unto thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lord, Lamb of the Lord, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, thou that sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Let us say, have mercy on us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God, the Father. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowing and love. Hallelujah. And in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Now, I know usually that with this point, hallelujah, in our communion service, we go into what a fellowship, hallelujah. But we have a special song that we want you to listen to today. We have a song and a video that was put together by one of our own, none other than Brother Lawrence Hill, who has been a pioneer of music for more than 50 years, who has a love and a, an affirmation for God and for music. So let us listen and allow this to be our fellowship video and song as we have ended communion. Oh, 
Rejoice in one of our own, Brother Lawrence, hallelujah, here. He's a member of New Bethel AME Church located in Lathonia, Georgia. We thank you, Brother, for allowing us to uh, share in your creation. We thank you, Pastor Reverend Thomas, for allowing you to share with us on this communion day. Hallelujah. What the world needs now is love sweet love. Let us move right along, amen, and let us go into our Apostle Creed. Let us say it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, make up heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come and judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We just thank all of you today for joining us on this Communion Sunday. We pray God has given you a message. God has encouraged you. We pray that you will join back in with us again next Sunday at 930. We, pr we ask that you will come and join us on Tuesday at 7 for a prayer line and Wednesdays at 630 for our Bible study. Again, we thank our partners for coming with us and, and for traveling with us and for for. for celebrating with us and for donating to us as we do what God has told us to do. And remember, we're sending out all the masks and the t-shirts. Amen. For we can all come together and celebrate the burning of the mortgage. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God and his mercy endures forever 
and ever and ever. Now may God bless you. May he keep you. May he smile upon you. May he let you know even in death, even when it seems like it's all over in your situation and circumstances, even when you've lost your job, been kicked out in the streets, your lights are out, and it seems like that there's no way out, that God allowed it to happen, that he might lift you higher, that he might bring you out, that he might be glorified through you as God delivers you and restores you into a higher position. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Come back again to Camp Hope AME Church. Hallelujah.